Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to one of the most expected software deals this year. The long-time dominating parallel framework MPI is today challenged by GasNet, which is not unknown to insiders, but definitely the underdog in this match. I'm Benjamin and I'm glad to present this extraordinary show to you. But before starting the show, let me introduce our today's rivals quickly. First, the widely known and long-time dominating one. Welcome on stage, MPI. Born in 1994, it has always improved its skills while never losing sight of its core competence, simple point-to-point -point messaging between processes. During the years it gained more and more currency and is today the de facto standard in its field. On the other side we have our today's challenger, GasNet. First defined in 2002, it targets not so much the authors of parallel software directly, but more the implementers of libraries, and so comes with a totally different concept of communication. To get more insight in the different features of our opponents, welcome now our technical expert who will give us a short overview to their combat styles. Thank you Benjamin. I'm also Benjamin and I will show you in the next minute some details about the differences between our two candidates. Let's start with MPI. Synchronous communication is definitively known as the safer one of its two main modes. After one process sends a message to another one, it waits until the message received before continuing with the next instructions. This guarantees you can modify the buffer safely at any time, but also results in a synchronization barrier, which increases the risk of deadlocks and decreases the performance. In asynchronous mode, this synchronization barrier disappears, but now we must ensure manually that the buffer is modifiable again. GasNet has a totally different and more flexible approach called active messaging. Here you can declare function with a certain signature, they must accept precisely the arguments defined in the standard, which can be called from another process. This is why they are called active. The sender does not only provide the data, but the message can also process the data at its destination. To achieve this, each function must be registered with a number, which is transferred alongside to the data and is converted back to a function call. In GasNet, the buffers are modifiable at any time, but for long messages, you have to manage the memory for buffering by yourself, which can get complicated. Thank you, Benjamin. But now let's dive right into the first round. We compare the effective bandwidth and latency on UK's national supercomputer Archer. The bandwidth tells us how fast we can transfer data in the network, whereas the latency determines how long the network needs to react on a request. This is tested for increasing message size in a ping pong like manner on two different nodes. But let's see how they perform on these tasks. Oh, this is not a good start for a GasNet. Its latency is constantly higher than with MPI. With bandwidth, they start very similar, but the bigger message sizes have more relevance here. And here MPI is also better. This isn't a good omen for the next benchmarks. But let's continue with round number two, the stencil benchmark. Here we distribute a grid over many processes and generate new grid points out of their neighbors. This is a very predictable communication since we transfer the edges of each part to its neighbor process with a few but big messages. For this task we will scale the number of cores in a way that the workload for each process stays the same. And we see a big increase at the beginning, but then both stay nearly constant, as expected for weak scaling. Their performance is very similar too, so there's no clear winner here. Each gets a half point. For our final round, both must perform a graph 500 benchmark. Here we have a random graph distributed over our processes. On this, we start a breath first search. From the start point, we look up all directly connected points and continue this procedure until we found our searched element. This results in many unpredictable small messages that stress the communication system. Again, we scale in a way that each core has the same number of graph points. Let's see how they perform. Oh, this is really bad. GasNet is magnitude slower than MPI. One reason for this could be the difference in the latency seen before. For these many but small messages, the differences add up and have a much bigger impact than before in the stencil. In the end we must conclude. The active messaging component of GasNet is not able to compete with MPI. Only in one case it performs similar. So the clear winner of this competition is MPI. But to be fair, I must mention that using active messages as a drop-in replacement for standard point-to-point -point communication is quite unusual and we also haven't used the remote memory access component of GasNet. Here we are already at the end of this show. Thank you very much for watching. I also want to thank Praise for providing me this experience and my mentors Nick Brown and Oliver Brown for their constant support. <laughs>